Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, everybody. Today is the annual best and worst of whatever year we're in video. I usually get the first video of the year. This setup is a little different than last time. I didn't really want to do the green screen uh, because I'm still in vacation mode, I'm still on break. Doing the five minutes that it takes to set up would just take all the energy out of me. I realized it would take the same amount of time it took me to set this up with the slideshow and the lights, but um... And this time we get to see a uh, pretty little kitty that was in Sentra. This is the one, the other one's over here. Um, so they're both in arms reach, I'm not, I'm not turning the camera to Cheyenne, I'm not getting up to do that, but she's here, trust me. So yeah, no green screen, no ho big holiday green screen cheer. Uh, we're only doing, um, slideshow, you can't even see this one. This is the shot of, uh, B3 in the Sentra, but, f*** it, I don't care. Before we get into the best movies, the worst movies, and the awards, I need to say a massive thank you to everybody who has contributed to this channel, who has helped this channel out. When it comes to actors, when it comes to people helping me film, when it comes to people just liking, subscribing, and sharing, you guys mean the world to me. At the start of this year, we started off with about 100 subscribers, and now we are at 179. That is insane, that is unreal. And what's even more unreal is that our view count started about, to me, what is even more unreal is that this channel started about 4,800-ish views at the start of this year, and we have gained 13,500-ish views. Uh, so now our total view counts at 18,371. That's incredible. That's amazing. And I'm just so thankful to everyone who has like watched the short films that I released. That's what's mainly got those uh, view jumps. Uh, and our, my Black Adam review also. Thank you guys for watching my Black Adam review, which jumped those views. Completely insane. So thank you guys so much. This hobby has been super fun for me. Uh, I've definitely dialed my videos back this semester just because it's been so busy uh, with the short films. Uh, but movie reviews will jump back up shortly and uh, even more short films will be coming out because I have a lot of big stuff planned for next semester or, you know, these next five months. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. So, anyway, without further ado, let's get into the awards because there's a lot of them. We jumped up a lot. So, uh, so let's get into it. Before I kick off the top ten list, I have not seen every movie of this year and there's a lot of movies I really wanted to see that probably should be on this list if I did see them, but sadly they're not. Movies I wanted to see were Tar, Bodies, 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 Glass Onion, that just came out and I didn't get a chance. Same for Pinocchio, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, not the, not the other one. Not the other two that came out this year. All right, slow down. I didn't get to see RRR, RRR looks fantastic. All Quiet on the Western Front and I didn't watch Adam Project. I heard a lot of people say they liked it, didn't really appeal to me, but I don't know, maybe it was maybe it was really good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do the best movies, some awards, and then the worst movies of the year. So we're gonna start off with the best movies, and at number 10, out of all the movies I've seen this year, at number 10 lands Avatar The Way of Water. I'm a big Avatar hater. I know, I'm a little stinker for that. I know I'm a little Scrooge, but I just think Avatar 2009 is kind of boring. It doesn't live up to the hype for me. So I was not excited to see this one. Uh, I was like, yeah, I worked at a movie theater. So I was like, yeah, I'll see it for free. I'll see it four days early, you know, not to flex on anybody. I watched it and I really enjoyed this one. I really, really had a great time watching this movie. It is a little too long, it's a little bloated. A lot of people think it's a lot of dumb filler, but I think all the water stuff is pretty incredible. Uh, I hate to say it, but I was swept away watching this movie. So yeah, that is at number 10. And number nine on my list is Scream 2022. Scream 5, 5 Cream, whatever you want to call it. I had a blast in this one. I thought this one was super fun. I have a soft spot for Scream. It's one of my favorite or icons, I guess you could say. It's definitely in my top three. Um, I had a blast watching this one. I thought it was super fun. I thought the twist was really funny. The kills have gotten a little bit more gory, which I'm always down for. And it was just a fun, scary movie, and that's all I really care about with scary movies, that I have fun. Uh, and it's a little intense for me, so yeah, I really enjoyed this. Uh, I, already, I had a viewer about it, so put that link up there, so you guys can watch that and see what I really thought about it. And at number 8 is X. I watched X uh, later in the year, I didn't see it in theaters, and I really regret doing that, because it was really fun. I really like this movie. I haven't seen Pearl, I bet Pearl would probably be on this list or be tied with X, but X was such a good throwback to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 1970s, you know, like just such a cool Texas vibe. I really liked the movie. Uh, I thought it was really unsettling. I really liked the horror. The gore was really cool. Uh, and I just kind of like a little cliche horror movie that has a lot of sex in this one. Again, I bet Pearl will probably be on this list, but I did not get to see Pearl. But when I find the time, I'll watch that. And I'm really excited to see Maxine. You know, I kind of like this very quick movie trilogy. So yeah, I'm really excited uh, to see the future that this franchise holds. So yeah, great job, X. Next up is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. This one, uh, I really like this one. And I'm about to get a lot of hate for this. 
I should guess. I'm about to get a lot of hate for this one, but I'm not the biggest fan of the first Black Panther movie. It's great culturally, but I just like as a movie, I just wasn't as wowed as everybody else was. Uh, I still like it though. Uh, I think this one's way better than that one. I really enjoyed this one. And the, what does suck about it, it's, it's so sad. I watched it twice and it's just it's so sad, you know? It was really depressing just to, you know, see the loss of Chadwick Boseman again. There's my cat. See the loss of Chadwick Boseman again. That just, it sucked. And uh, I think a lot of the ideas that were dealt in this movie were done really well. I really like Namor. Namor was such a huge standout for me. I like the Aztec feel of this movie that, that Talo Khan had. Uh, what a great take on Namor, by the way. I mean, that was exactly what I thought of Namor. Growing up, I always thought Namor was like Asian. I guess he was white. I'm fine with them making him Hispanic. I thought that was super cool. Angela Bassett's a standout. I don't hear anyone talk about her. She's great in this movie. Underused even. Like every scene she's in stole it for me. I, I want more of Angela Bassett. She's absolutely fantastic, especially in this movie. So yeah, Wakanda Forever. Great surprise. I really liked it. Super sad. That sucked, but other than that, yeah, I really like this movie. And number six is The Northman. I love Robert Eggers. And I hate to say it, but... This is my least favorite Robert Eggers movie, but it's still like number six of the year. The Witch and Lighthouse, peak, you know, love those movies, fantastic movies. I think this one's really good as well. I really liked it. A little too much testosterone for me. Coming from a man, this movie is so much just raw male energy, which is really fun and really awesome at times. And there's a little times where it comes a little too much, but I really like this movie. thought this movie was great. I was very entertained by it. Willem Dafoe is very, in a very little, but obviously a standout. I like the story about it. And yeah, it was just really cool. Kicking out the top five, we have Nope. I love Nope. Nope is, I'm still thinking about it. I haven't rewatched it, but I'm still thinking about it the more the year goes on. The only thing about this movie I didn't really like is I didn't wasn't the biggest fan of how it was all like resolved and settled. But other than that, I thought Nope was super great. There's two scenes in this movie um that like genuinely really freaked me out like really really freaked me out like i was frozen i didn't want to move like and i don't know it was just a very effective movie i really enjoyed it not what i was expecting but in of course jordan peele kills it again so great job at number four we have barbarian barbarian is my favorite horror movie of the year it beat nope it beat scream it beat x i thought this was so good i loved it this movie. I wish I saw it in theaters. I wish I didn't watch it on a TV. I wish I watched it in theaters, but still, I had a blast watching this movie. It was so fun. Just enough to make me like lean back in my seat and just not want to move. It was a very effective movie for me. I recommend this movie to anybody. If you like horror, and if you don't like horror, I still think you should give this one a chance. It's very disturbing. It's done very well. And it has an amazing tone shift, like in the middle of the movie, or like from the second act on. It was insane. And this movie is very funny. Like very, very, very funny. So I recommend Barbarian to anyone to go out there and watch, please. All right, so we have our top three. And at third place, we have Top Gun Maverick. I was a Top Gun hater. I don't really like Top Gun that much, like the first movie. I think it's all right, it's fine. I don't know, I just, it's not really meant for me. You know, Rick, my dad, he was super stoked for this movie. I was like, oh, of course you are. You know, you watched Top Gun when in the 80s, you know, you got that nostalgia and this is a very like dad kind of movie. So I was dogging on it when the trailers were coming out. Movie dropped, I, I loved it. I, I'm glad. I was, I am so happy to say I was wrong. This movie was so good. I loved how everything was done as real as possible. I think it was great. I think it's very exciting and I do want to see it again. And I should have seen it again when they released it in theaters, but I didn't get the chance. Um, but it was great. It was a lot of fun. I really liked the movie and I'm glad that I was wrong. All right. And number two was everything everywhere all at once. This would have been number one, but something else came out. Everything everywhere all at once was such a lovely surprise and I'm glad I saw this movie in theaters I had so much buzz about this movie everyone was like you need to go see this movie it's a 10 out of 10 it's easy 10 out of 10 I'm like oh really okay yeah sure yeah I guess I'll check it out and then just more and more people told me so went to theater watched it it's fantastic I it was a 9.5 for me 9.5 10 out of 10 rounds up you know <sighs> my cat's running around she's got the zoomies that whoa my only problem with everything ever all at once is it's got a pacing problem. That is it. That movie is like two hour 20. Um, and it just doesn't feel like two hours and 20 minutes. It, it feels way longer than that because it's so fast paced. But other than that, I think that movie is fantastic. It's great. I got very emotional. The rock scene. If I had to pick like one scene that stood out to me, it's the rock scene. I tear up just thinking about it. It's fantastic. If you haven't seen everything ever all at once, go watch it. 
and I know everybody's talking about it, so you're clearly just ignoring people. Go watch it, it's fantastic. We've made it, number one baby. What was my number one favorite movie of the year? If you haven't guessed by now, it was The Batman. The Batman is exactly what I wanted from a Batman movie. Not exactly, you know what? 96% what I want from a Batman movie. The only thing I wish, if I were to make a Batman movie with this tone, maybe, um, wouldn't fit, but I love spandex. I love it when characters are in cloth and spandex. I think that's so cool. And Batman having white eyes. And that's it. It is the best live action Batman movie. Is it the best Batman movie? Probably. There's th th That's the problem. There's so many good Batman movies. You could name any Batman movie and I can see why it's your favorite. You can even think Batman Forever and Robin are your favorite. I can really understand that. They're super funny. I love those movies. So it's really hard to say which is a favorite Batman movie. I mean, Lego Batman, Batman Mask of Phantasm, Under the Red Hood, Batman Beyond. Almost any Batman movie is perfect. I, I take that back. Almost any Batman movie is very, very good though. And I just, this was perfect for me. This is exactly what I needed. Came out at the right time. Everything about this movie I love. I've raved about it all year. I've seen it three times. I was gonna see it a fourth, but I decided to watch something far worse. And I just think it was, I just think it's literally a perfect and beautiful movie. I love it, I love it so much. I downloaded LUTs for it, which is color grading. For Christmas, I asked for the same lens they used for this movie, which is really cheap apparently. So I will talk about that later. It was my movie of the year. I still think about it. I have a giant poster of Riddler above my bed. Yeah, I'll show I'll show a picture of it now. It's this movie was everything for me. I it was everything I wanted. I loved it. I love a detective Batman. I made a review about it. It's up here. So go ahead and watch that. And yeah, so now let's get into some awards. Actually, before we get into awards, I have some honorable mentions. Honorable mentions would be Bullet Train. I love Bullet Train. I just watched it like a week ago. Not gonna lie, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah, it deserves to be on this list. So sorry, but I think Bullet Train was super fun. I really had a blast with it. Parade. Uh, was great. I needed a Predator movie to come out and it came out and I loved it. I loved like the Native American feel to that movie. It was great. Violent Night, I was expecting to be on my worst list, but it's not. I like Violent Night a lot. Violent Night was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Also, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. I really enjoyed that movie. Like I really, really did. And I really thought it was going to be on my list. Um, and I only have one problem with that movie. You need to retitle it. I think I really enjoyed that movie I think the number one flaw with it is you need to retitle it didn't feel like a multiverse of madness It felt like a fun Doctor Strange little Bonanza, you know, like I just you need to retitle it and that I really liked it. That was really fun Love the Sam Raimi horror movie feel to it. I don't know if I explained it But these are all like projects I've worked on in short films. It's hard to see it doesn't fucking matter All right, baby. We are down to the awards now. I'm gonna give the first award to best series we have some nominees. I'm not gonna say every series I watched this year, but some that like really stood out to me. Uh, we have Better Call Saul season six. We have Obi Wan. At I'm not gonna, it's not going to Obi Wan. I'm just letting you know right now. Bump down for me. Uh, Harley Quinn season three. The Boys season three. Andor. Uh, Book of Bofet. Book of Bofet. Not getting it. And the winner for best series is Better Call Saul. It's perfect. It's perfect. It it season six is fucking fantastic i loved it um yeah there's really not much else to say uh, what all i have to say is go watch it i know a lot of my friends are like it's too slow for me it's not as good as breaking bad you're an idiot i'm joking i'm joking but you are an idiot i think better call saul is like masterfully written masterfully done and yeah it's a little slow but i like slow stuff i think when slow is done right it's you know it's exceptional and i think better call saul does it perfectly all right next award is best looking movie or best cinematography um, I forgot I made this award last year, so bringing it back. Uh, nominees would be The Northman, The Batman, Avatar The Way of Water, Wakanda Forever, Nope, Barbarian, and the award for best looking movie slash cinematography is going to go to The Batman. What'd you expect? Best project of MCU Phase 4. Now I know Phase 4 also went back into 2021, but I'm just gonna say MCU Phase 4 in general, but it did come out this year. Uh, we have plenty of nominees. We have like uh, Moon Knight, She-Hulk, uh, Thor: Love and Thunder, Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. God, a lot of stuff came out this year. Miss Marvel, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, and Werewolf by Night. Uh, best project at MCU Phase Four is Werewolf by Night. It's exactly what I want. I need Marvel to give me more of that. My only complaint, the reason it's not a 10 out of 10, is not actually filmed like 
an old 50s thing. It looks like it's filmed like a digital movie, and then they just slapped on the filter and the... Yeah, I just think, you know, like WandaVision, how they had like the camera stuff actually look like it's filmed from the time period. That's what I think he should have done. Other than that, I loved it. It's everything I wanted. The second time I watched it, for some reason I cried. I don't know. I had a long week. All right, next up is Best Cameo. Um, well, Doctor Strange had a bunch of them, so I'll just nominate all those. This year is full of cameos from like everywhere, but Best Cameo goes to Henry Winkler and Black Adam. I laughed so hard when his face popped up. I looked over to my dad and I was like, and I literally was like, what the f Thought it was great. I'm the only person in the world who thinks Black Adam is like really funny, like enjoyably funny. So um, yeah, had to give it to Henry Winkler. I literally was astounded that they got him for that. Next award goes to best streaming service. And this one's subjective. Uh, I don't have Apple TV and I don't have AMC Plus. I don't really, I mean, I watch Better Call Saul on AMC Plus. I don't have those two. I don't use Paramount that much, but all of these are like up to you guys. Uh, but for me personally, the app I've used almost every day, even if it's on the background, it's HBO Max. I think HBO Max has an incredible catalog. Uh, lately, I've been rewatching regular show. Over the summer, uh, I finished my Batman the Animated Series run. Uh, just fantastic. Just, it's so good, so underrated. I love HBO Max so much. Thank you to whoever made HBO Max. All right, baby, we got Best Hair. There's a lot of nominees for Best Hair. We got Robert Pattinson in The Batman, we got Timothy Oliphant in Book of Boba Fett, and we got Aaron Taylor Johnson for uh, Bullet Train. And just, yeah, amazing hair, amazing facial hair. But I'm gonna have to give it to Timothy Oliphant. Just, I mean, it's just classic. I mean, I love that hair, it looks so good, you know? Kudos to you, dog. Now we got Worst Hair. I don't think I did this last year. Um, and I'm not even gonna do nominees. Worst Hair, Spider from Avatar The Way of Water. Just. Looks like a little gross kid walking around. All right, these next three awards are dedicated to the projects I've worked on. This one is unreleased. It'll be released later, uh, probably later this month or February, but, uh, well, it's back to Centra. It's from Centra now. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk about projects that have some awards to go to. For our first award, we have Best Actor. So these are people who have acted in my short films. The nominees are Quentin Gallagher for Defacer, Logan Browning in A Little Trip, unreleased, but he was also the voice of B3 in the Centra. We have Angel in his role in A Little Trip. We have Kenzie in her role in A Little Trip. And we have Graham for his role in Cottage Cheese. I would have known him for Defacer, but Cottage Cheese, I mean, come on, that's that's a stunt in acting. Anyway, so the award goes to Logan Browning. Congratulations, Logan Browning. You did an amazing job in A Little Trip, which no one here has seen. I'll release it shortly. All right, next up is Best Personal Effect. Again, I practice VFX all the time, and I'm just gonna play them over the screen after I name them. So, nominees are uh, Lightsaber Fight. That was filmed, like, in, that was filmed January 2021. I didn't even, like, begin editing until, like, February 2022. Like, I just sat on it. Uh, but I decided to edit, and you know what? I really liked it. I'm genuinely like, very happy with how it turned out. Obviously, the sound effects are just placers, so don't you know, don't take the sound effects too seriously. So yeah. Next effect is the Death Star and Fleet with 2D images. Next up is the 3D Tie Fighter and Fleet Flyby. Next is the hologram effect in Sentra. <laughs> you think this isn't worth a second chance? <laughs> Next is the ship in Sentra's blue screen. Next up is the wall I built for Sentra. Yeah, I had to build a wall off cardboard. I will be doing a director's commentary and talk about Defacer and Sentra in a little trip when I get the chance. Uh, and the whole wall thing will be all in Sentra, but you know what? Might as well let you guys know. Yeah, I built that wall. Next up is the Sentra green screen space. And finally is the eye gouge from Defacer. 
And the award goes to the eye gouge and defacer. It's just gross. It's everything I wanted. It took us so long to do it. It took us two tries. First try was awful. Second try was, I was like, that's great. That's good. We'll go with it. So yeah, it took took a very long time to do it. We had like a lot of people and the setup was real weird. Here's an image. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun and I think it deserves the award. All right. And lastly is the best personal short film. I filmed a lot this year uh, and some of it won't be nominated. Some of it wasn't even released on YouTube. Some of it was just shown for whatever was done in class. I just didn't think it was great enough to put on YouTube. And the nominees for best personal short film are One Night, a GT5 Machinima, Only You, The Defacer, Video Project Number 3, that one was, maybe it'll get uploaded. The Centra's Arrival, and A Little Trip, which is unreleased. And the winner goes to Only You. I think Only You is probably the best thing I made all year. Could be argued. I know my cousin Nathan thinks The Centra should have won, or Defacer, or even A Little Trip. I can't remember, I talked to him like two weeks ago. I think Only You is probably like my most tightly made short film. So but yeah, those are the awards. And now the awards section is over, we will go on to the worst movies of the year. Before I get into the worst movies of the year, the movies I watch are calculated. If something looks like shit, I usually don't see it. The only reason I see something that looks like shit is to put it on this list. Um, and one of them you will know for sure. I watched uh, five movies that I think are deserving of this list. I watched more movies that weren't even on the best list, but I didn't want to subject them to the worst list because they don't deserve that. So let's jump Black Adam's not on this list. I had fun watching Black Adam. Would I have fun watching it again? Fuck no. But it's not it's not deserving on the worst list. It really isn't. Kicking off the worst list, number five is Spirited. I didn't my dad really wanted to watch this one. He likes Ryan Reynolds. I like Reynolds too, but you know, to a degree. Uh, this is Ryan Reynolds at his worst. Um, I did have some enjoyment in this movie. I, you know, I laughed a couple times. There's two, like, there's three very good songs, like genuinely. There's a, a joke about Good Afternoon. I thought that was very funny. Um, movie looked like it was shot on iPhone. You know, it kind of looked like shit. Um, didn't really enjoy much of it. Oh yeah, the only other thing I liked was the spooky lighting. Uh, whenever you see like the Death or Grim Reaper or whatever. So yeah, that's it. Movie not good. Didn't really enjoy it. Very forgettable. It's completely left my mind. So, um, yeah, spirited. Number four is Evil Dies Tonight. Halloween ends, baby. I made a video on this one already. Be linked up here if you really want to watch it. I'm not really going to get into it. This one sucks dick. This one is very bad. Is it worse than Kills? No, it's not worse than Kills. No, it's not worse than Kills. But at least Kills had Michael Myers in it. So, all right, number three is Thor Love and Thunder. I didn't hate this movie that much when it came out, uh, and it just slowly grew on me. I heard everyone was like, this movie sucks, it's the worst Marvel movie. And I was like, you say that like every time. And I watched it in the theater, I was like, ooh, yeah, not good, but not as bad as everyone says. And the more time, I was like, ooh. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely one of the worst. And now everyone's on a Taika Waititi hate train, like he's never made like amazing things before, which he has, um, so, I mean, I knew that was coming. Taiga, if you're ever watching this, I doubt it. But if you ever are, I think you make great stuff. I just think you fumbled the bag with this one. Everyone fumbles, so way to go. And number two on the worst list is Tall Girl 2. For the people who have seen Tall Girl 1, you watched it because it was really bad and it was really funny. I thought I could do the same for this one. I couldn't tell you one thing that happened in this movie. I just remember sitting there just like hating it. And again, it's Tall Girl 2. Everyone knows it's going to be bad, but... You know, usually they're kind of fun, you know, usually like you can make fun of a bad movie. Just this one was worthless, had none of the charm that, you know, the auteurs love about Tall Girl 1. So yeah, that, that was the biggest disappointment for me this year. But it definitely wasn't the worst movie. And I didn't watch this movie at all. Um, I watched this movie January 1st, 2023. And number one, I started the new year off just right. Number one was Morbius. I was like, this one's gonna be funny. This one's gonna be real funny. I'll, you know, I know Morbius is bad. Of course I'm gonna enjoy this one. My cat's gonna cross over. I don't know if you can, can you see her? Yeah, you guys, my cat's gonna cross over. I don't know, yeah, you can see her. Yep. My ESA animal knows when I'm distressed because I'm thinking about Morbius. This is more, this is more of a reflection on Sony. Sony has no idea what the f they're doing. This is coming from a student, okay? You know, someone who, doesn't know what the f they're doing. Sony does not know what the f 
they're doing. With Spider-Man, at least. You know, you guys know how to make some good movies. Just sell Spider-Man. You're not really getting that much profit if you're not making 20 movies a year with him. You know, you can keep Spider-Verse because you have no hands on with Spider-Verse. You let creative directors be creative. Um, so yeah, just sell all the live action stuff. Let the MCU do it. And I know the MCU has kind of gone a little downhill, but it's, it's way better than what you guys make. Let's be real. But yeah, what a year it was. This year was a lot bit very busy for me, but uh, it was a great year. I did a lot with filmmaking though. I've learned a lot. I've practiced a lot and I'm going to continue practicing. I don't have any production classes next semester. Uh, but I'm still gonna keep practicing. I'm still trying to do, you know, one little film a month because I need to stay practice and I love doing, you know, this. I love filming and stuff. It's a little more hard because I have to work uh, and balance other classes and stuff, but I'll make sure to find time for it. I'll make sure to make it work because I have to, you know, I like to do what I love. Again, huge thank you to every one of you who's contributed to this channel and has helped me out and supported me even even just watching. You guys are fantastic. I love doing what I love and it's nice to, to get some recognition for it. And I'm very happy for it. I'm very thankful. And I don't do this for money because I don't have enough, you know, the views and the subscribers. And I don't care to do it for money right now. It'd be nice. It'd be real nice. But it's just such a fun hobby for me. Uh, and it's good practice for me, like, editing and filmmaking. I, I love doing that. You know, editing is super fun for me. So I get to edit these even though it's super easy. It's like, it's a little reliever for me almost. You know, I love doing this. I just got HitFilm Pro. So I really want to try and go all out with more editing and more 3D models and more, like, crazier effects. Um, but we'll just have to see what this year holds for us. Anywho, guys, thank you for watching. Happy New Year. I hope your year was great, and I hope this one's even better. I hope you're doing what you love. If not, I hope you find that passion for it. And happy holidays. Hope your holidays was great. And thank you for watching these videos, and I will see you with more short films, more reviews, more director's commentaries, and hopefully a movie commentary. I doubt it. Anywho, guys, I'll see you all later. Peace.